I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry. We'll try to figure out maximum and minimum values for some interesting trigonometric expressions. Let's, we'll have actually four examples here. First, we'll find the minimum value for 6 secant square x plus 9 tan square x. There is a trick involved also since we are talking about tricks. Well, the answer always will be coefficient of secant square x as the minimum value, right? We'll see how, right? Question number two here is find the maximum and minimum value of cos theta plus sine square theta. Now, in this particular case, it is a lengthy calculation which needs to be done. So, I like you to concentrate on the method used to find the solution, right? So the idea here basically is to get equation which is quadratic form and once you get a quadratic equation you can easily find the maximum and minimum value, right? Now the third question is to the power of sine to the power of 6x plus cos to the power of 6x. Now here again we'll have to do a lot of work. This is not a straight question. We'll use the formula for a cube plus b cube to solve this particular question, right? Then we have find maximum minimum value of 8 to the power of sine x, 16 to the power of cos x, another interesting question. However, there is a trick to solve this question and get the answer immediately, right? So, uh, so two of these questions, you could actually straight away write down the answers, but for the other two, you may have to do some work. Now, let us see how to solve these questions. So we'll take the very first example, which is a trick involved, as, as I said. This is secant and that is tan. You know they are related. We know 1 plus tan square x is secant square x, right? So you could write tan square x as secant square x minus 1. Right. You could even uh, write secant square x as 1 plus 10 square x and then do the needful. Either way, you could work, right? So, let us say you make this substitution. Then 6 secant square x, the question here is plus 9 tan square x, right? So, it becomes 6 secant square x plus 9 times secant square x minus 1, which you could write as 6 secant square x plus 9 secant square x minus 9. Now, that gives you 9 plus 6 as 15 secant square x minus 9. Now, in this particular case, what could be the minimum value? Minimum value for this function, you can take out if you take the minimum value for secant square x, right? Now, secant square x basically will always be non-negative, right? Because square, so as far as secant square x is concerned, we know secant is 1 over cos it is always greater than or equal to positive 1, right? So, so the minimum value will be when secant square x is 1, right? So for minimum, secant square x should be equal to 1, right? So if you take this as 1, what do you get? In that case, you get 15 minus 9, which is 6, right? So you get exactly the same answer as the coefficient of secant square x. So that is the kind of trick involved here. So once you get this question in a multiple choice, you could always immediately write down the answer as 6. Now even if you start from this side, you will get the same result. So I like you to actually try it from both the sides and be sure that any question of this kind, if in general I write one question as, let us see, my question now is m secant square x plus n tan square x, right? Then the minimum value will be m, right? So that is going to be your answer. 
for any situation. I hope that makes sense, right? Let's move on to the next question now. And here is one of the most interesting questions. And I expect this to be in this year's test paper. The question here is, find maximum and minimum value of cos theta plus sine square theta. Four options are given to you. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now let us see how to solve such a question. Now in this particular question, we are given sine theta, sine square theta, and cos theta. Now what we can do here is write all these in terms of cos, right? So we can write cos theta plus sine square theta as equal to cos theta plus 1 minus cos square theta. Now rearrange, take 1 this side, so we have minus cos square theta plus cos theta. We can take minus common. So we get cos square theta minus cos theta in the bracket. To find maximum and minimum, we'll actually follow the principles of quadratic equations. So, so let's try to make it a perfect square. How can I make it a perfect square? Well, to make this as a perfect square, coefficient of cos theta is 1, we have to add and subtract half square, right? So we can write this as cos theta plus half square minus half square, correct? So that will help us to get a perfect square, right? So now we can write this as cos theta minus half whole square. And this becomes minus 1 over 4, correct? Now, Actually, we have two brackets, right? So this is your perfect square. Now we can open the bracket, so we get 1 minus, within the bracket we have cos theta minus half, whole square, and that becomes positive 1 over 4. Add 1 and 1 over 4, what do you get? You get 5 over 4, correct? You get 5 over 4 minus cos theta minus half, whole square. Now we have an expression from where we can actually find maximum or minimum value. Well, what could be the maximum value? Let's try to figure that out. So of course, if you deduct 0 from here, then we get maximum. So we have a maximum value of 5 over 4. Well, some of you who will be interested in knowing for what value of theta, of course, theta should be such that cos theta is half, right? So half minus half will be zero. So in your special triangle, well, this is not a part of this, but it is of interest to understand, right? So if we have this special triangle, then cos theta is half for pi by three. So for theta equals to pi by three, cos theta equals to half, right? So that will make this zero and we'll get the maximum value. Now, when can I get the minimum value? For minimum value, we should have maximum inside, right? So, so for minimum, what should be the case? For minimum, cos theta could be minus one. So it could be five by four minus, if I take this as minus one, minus one and half, that is going to give me the minimum, right? So that will be 5 over 4 minus. This becomes 3 over 2. And when you square it, it becomes 9 over 4. So that gives you a value of minus 4 over 4 or minus 1. So that becomes your, well, I, so we get a minimum value of minus 1. So that matches with our option A. Perfect. So that is how we could find maximum and minimum value. Correct. So that is the strategy. You need to complete the square and get it in a form so that you can easily find maximum or minimum value for the trigonometric function. I hope that makes sense. Now let us find maximum and minimum value for sine to the power of 6x plus cos to the power of 6x. Well, we could actually use the formula a plus b whole cube to solve this particular question, right? So think like this. First, let's write down the formula here. What is a plus b whole cube equals to? 
it is a cube plus b cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 a b square right which we could also write as a cube plus b cube plus 3 a b and within brackets a plus b right either way we just factored the last two terms to write it in this form okay so we can use this formula and then solve this particular question. Now, what are we given? We are given sine to the power of 6x plus cos to the power of 6x, which you could write as, okay, sine square x whole cube plus cos square x whole cube, right? So if you compare with this formula, we already have two cube terms. This is Q, okay. We already have two Q terms. We somehow have to have the other term. So what we are going to do is we are going to add and subtract this term. So three times A and B, which is sine square X cos square X. So that is three times AB. And within bracket, we'll write A plus B. For us, A is sine square X, okay. And B is cos square X. Their sum, as you know, is one. So that is why it is you know, very interesting to use. And now we'll use the same term as minus 3 sine square x cos square x times sine square x plus cos square x. Correct? So we added and subtracted this term. Now because of that, the first three terms make a perfect cube. Now we could write this as sine square x plus cos square x whole cube that is for the first three terms minus this all this right three sine square x cos square x now sine square x plus cos square x is one right so so that is how it could be reduced uh, this portion is also one so we get one minus and sine square x cos square x let's write like this we can write this as sine x cos x to the power of 2. So now you recall that 2 sine x cos x is sine 2x, so we'll use that formula. So we could write this as 2 over 2 sine x cos x whole square. Now this numerator will be sine 2x, right? Whole square. Now you can open this brackets. So when you open the bracket, you get 1 minus 3, and that is 1 over 4, right? 2 square, and we get sine 2x whole square, right? So that is what you get. Now, we can easily write down the maximum and minimum values for this particular function, correct? Sine square 2x is something which is always between 0 and 1, right? So let's do our work here. Try to understand. So we have sine square x, sine square 2x, which is going to be between 0 and positive 1. When we multiply by a negative number, negative 3 over 4 in this case, the signs will change, right? So we'll change the sign, right? Negative 3 over 4, sine square 2x, negative 3 over 4 times 0 will make it 0. So I should have written 0 here, right? Earlier I wanted to write this on the other side. Anyway, that is better. You multiply by negative 3 over 4 times 0 is 0. So you get 0 here. And this becomes negative 3 over 4. All the inequality sign changes. Now we'll add 1, right? So we have 1 here. 1 minus 3 over 4 sine squared 2x should be greater than or equal to 1 minus 3 over 4, okay? So the maximum minimum value clearly is between, we'll add this up, right? So what do you get? 4 minus 3, which is 1. So it is between 1 and 1 over 4. So what we get here is that the maximum value for us is 1 and the minimum value is equal to 1 over 4. Correct? So that is how we could actually solve this question. 
We'll also find the maximum and minimum value of 8 to the power of sin x times 16 to the power of cos x. So how do we work this out? So we are given 8 to the power of sin x times 16 to the power of cos x. Now 8 could be written as 2 to the power of 3, right? So we have 2 to the power of 3 sin x times 2 to the power of 4 cos x. Do you see how we are getting the same form? Right? So we could write this as 2 to the power of, they get added up, right? So we get 3 sin x plus 4 cos x. Now it is in the same form, right? So it is of the form of a, a cos x plus b sin x, correct? Now in this case, maximum minimum, as we have seen, is a square plus b square square root. So here a is 3, b is 4, right? So we have a equals to 3, b equals to 4 in the exponents. Therefore, in the exponents, the maximum and minimum value will be 3 square plus 4 square square root, which is plus minus 5. So the maximum value will be equal to 2 to the power of plus 5 and the minimum value is going to be equal to 2 to the power of minus 5. You get the idea, right? 2 to the power of plus 5 is 32, and 2 to the power of minus 5 is 1 over 32. So we get a range for the given function, right? So the form given an exponent could also be uh, written as the a cos x plus b sin x form, and so we can apply the same strategy and find the result. So that is how we could actually solve such a question. I hope you understand and appreciate how useful this technique is. And with using this technique, it is very easy and effective to find maximum minimum of such functions where you get sum of sine x and cos x. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.